In today's unboxing video, we're going to be opening this, the LK5 Pro 3D printer from Longa. Let's get started. So the other day, Longa reached out to me and said, hey, Callum, do you want to review this printer on your channel, the Longa LK5 Pro? Until quite recently, I hadn't even heard of Longa, but someone in the comments the other day said, what do you think of the Longa LK5 Pro? So when I suddenly had this request, I couldn't say no, and here we are with this printer to unbox. As I understand, the LK5 Pro is a sort of competitor to the Creality CR10 line of 3D printers, so it will be very interesting to see how this actually shapes up and compares once I do my review video at a later stage. But anyway, let's dive straight in and have a look at what's in the box. So, taking down the first layer of protective packaging, you can see this is what we've got. Quite a nice looking scraper, some spare parts, a piece of Bowden adapter, and what looks at to be a spare filament runout sensor. A very small, beigey coloured filament sample. A quick start guide. We've got here what I imagine will be the Z gantry. We've got the glass ultra base style build plate, some Z axis support rods, a lead screw. I'm going to pull this red packaging away. Power cable, Z axis stepper, I presume. Some parts, wrench, corner brace. Then we've got the bed and control unit in here. If I can get it out. Seems like it's also wired into the X axis and printer head. Coupler that's come off there. Filament spool holder and the touchscreen and a little screw. So it looks like that spare screw had just come from this lead screw coupler. We do seem to be missing a washer, so that probably should have come in a little packet. But not to worry. Hey, I found the washer. You might have noticed when I was unboxing there, but that package had quite a small depth, and I think. Basically, we're, we're going to have to pay a little bit for that in terms of a little bit more assembly of this printer. But hopefully it won't take too long and I'll get started on that now. So what they actually want me to do first is to install this X-axis onto the Z gantry. So hopefully that'll just be a case of sliding it on. The side with the holes in on this is the side where the extruder goes. So like this. That was nice and easy. Really smooth movement here. The Z movement is supported with these rolling wheels which move along the extruded aluminium frame. Nice and smooth. We then got to install the lead screw, the stepper motor, the coupler and some screws. and get the lead screw out of this cellophane film. Five minutes later. Who's got any tips for getting a lead screw out of cling film? My tip would be, don't put it in cling film in the first place. The lead screw's out. Longer, that's the first bit of recommendation. Do away with the plastic wrapping around your lead screw and your two Z-axis rods. Lead screw nut onto the lead screw like that, lift the frame up, place the screw into it and then use the two little screws to attach it all together. We can then position it into the Z screw coupler and the stepper motor. You'll want to loosen off the coupler at the top anyway to make sure that the lead screw can fall completely into place where it needs to be. And we're then going to want to install the stepper and bracket onto the Z-axis frame. That bit of the Z-axis installed. So we've got the stepper motor and the bracket attached to the frame and the coupler attached to the lead screw. Always make sure that's tightened, otherwise you could get artifacts showing up in the print and the z-axis not moving up as expected. Right, the next step is to install this z-axis gantry onto the bed unit itself. The 
next one is to install these supporting rods. Again, it's wrapped in this cling film. A few minutes later. So you take the screw, place it through the rod and tighten into the outside of the frame. Same again on the base. So you can release the nut, move the nut up and down and then spin the rod, spin the eyelet in the rod and that adjusts the length of this pole so you can end up getting it to go in perfectly. I guess that just saves them some machining tolerance by doing that implementation, but that's worked quite nicely. And what these bars do is help prevent that Y wobble uh, from this gantry moving like that as the, the head gets higher. Uh, we can then install the lead screw bearing bracket, which goes up here at the top of the lead screw to help again prevent that movement over the top of the lead screw like that. Nice bit of stability there. The filament spool holder goes on at the back of the printer over here on an angle and we can then put some nice filament on it and we go for go for yellow and the screen goes on here and the screen has a little reminder on it reminding you to make sure you set the battery voltage to the correct area you just do that with a switch so obviously where i am is 240 so i've made sure to set it to 240. down here don't know if you can see but there's a little white label um, and that is there to, to tell you basically where to install this. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so that goes on there to the top of the white label. And I can see just by, by looking that that is in a good position. You know I don't normally like single-use plastic, but when it comes to a bed, it's obviously wrapped. Uh, if the bed was to shatter during shipping, then that would just ensure that no damage is done. So. I'll allow it for that one. Right, we'll put it on, and then they've included bulldog clips for the bed. And then the final step is just wiring it up. These cables here, they're all labeled. So this one's for the extruder, goes in here and here, X axis. Then down here, we've got the Z axis and the Z axis motor. And then we've got the bed cable in the back here. Y axis and the Y switch is already set up. And so there we have it. One longer LK5 Pro unboxed and set up. For me, there's a few things that stand out about this printer. Obviously, the setup could have been a little bit easier. Uh, I appreciate that some of the elements will have been left separated apart to make for the most efficient shipping, which is something I think is great. However, there were a few things like the setting up the lead screw where that could have been done ahead. There's, there's no really space efficiency saved from not putting that in. Uh, so I think, I think that could have been done just because it's a little bit fiddly. Uh, so if you're not too dexterous, then uh, you, might, you might struggle with that. But generally speaking, this is a pretty easy setup. I'm impressed by how smoothly some of the mechanics of the printer move. It will be interesting to see how this just single lead screw affects the reliability of the prints and whether we have any sort of angles showing up on the tool prints. I know that the original Corality CR10 used just one lead screw and they later upgraded to two lead screws with the CR10S, but they didn't bring in these nice braces until the, the Pro models or the, the V2 or something like that. So we've got a sort of a hybrid that's taken some of the upgrades, but not all of them. And as I understand, this is quite a reasonably priced printer. Very much interested to see how it performs when I do a review in two to four weeks. Look out for that. In the meantime, I have some questions for you. Question one, are there any models you would like to see me put on this printer and see how it gets on? Question two, are there any elements of this printer you would like me to particularly probe and have a look at properly for the review? And question three, what are your first impressions of this printer from the unboxing? Does it look like a printer you've got your eye on or does it look like one that you might skip by? Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more content in the future. Obviously the review video of this one will follow in two to four weeks. I like to properly put them through their paces. 
What else can you expect from the channel coming up soon? Well, I've got some new releases coming up with 3D Tomorrow Filament, and so I might start putting some of that on the channel as well. I'm actually at the moment bidding on a new unit for 3D Tomorrow, which is my filament business and 3D print service business. And so if that goes ahead, I'll have a much better space where I can actually start taking some of this recording equipment there and doing recording directly from my workshop, which would open the door to a completely different element of content. And I hope you guys will really enjoy that. But equally, if there's anything else you'd like to see on the channel, then just let me know and I will see what I can do. I'm looking forward to giving this printer a review and I hope you enjoy it when it comes out in a few weeks. See you then. Cheers.